Hi, my dear lovely students. How are you? I hope you are doing well. I hope you are safe and sound. Welcome to the session. We are continuing with a very interesting grammar series where we are learning about verbs. So today's class is going to be very interesting as we are going to explore more about the various types of verbs. Before we commence with the session, could I please request you to use the share button and invite all your friends for our very special Fandu class where we learn and have fun together. So please do use the share button and invite all your friends so that you know we can study and become better together. Right? Hi to everybody who has just joined. Welcome to the session, my dear lovely students. So before we begin, let me quickly, quickly introduce myself. My name is Juhi Naru. I have 12 years of experience in training students for various competitive exams. I also happen to be a life skills coach and a content creator. I've done my bachelor's in technology and master's in business administration. So today we are going to talk about phrasal and irregular verbs. Very interesting and it's going to be really uh, fun to explore these concepts. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hi to everybody who has just joined. So we are continuing with our special series of verbs and today we are going to learn more about phrasal and irregular verbs. So let's uh, start. So what are irregular verbs? Irregular verbs are those who don't make a spelling pattern right when we talk about their simple past or part part past participle verbs like if i'll say uh, may go take come no see right so for eat i'll say eat then the second form would be ate third form would be eaten right so there is no spelling pattern that's being formed so that is the reason we call such verbs as irregular right so it doesn't mean that they're not functioning rightly but just the way the spelling patterns are there there is no set or regular spelling pattern so that is the reason we call them irregular verbs right so like bring bought bought right so that's how we do it think thought thought right so that's how we do it no uh new known right so for make made made right for go we'll say go went gone so all these um, verbs when we talk about first form second form and third form there is no set spelling pattern that we can think of but it varies so that is the reason the word irregular comes into the picture right so ir is a uh, the prefix that we are putting before regular so it changes the meaning right so there's this word repairable and you put uh, I are before it so it becomes irreparable so it you know absolutely changes the meaning irreparable means opposite which cannot be you know repaired so regular opposite would be irregular regular verbs are the ones which follow a conventional uh, you know set spelling pattern and what would be the you know uh, irregular verbs where there is not a conventional spelling pattern which can be observed right so i hope you are clear and i hope i make sense so let's further proceed with the concept so uh, what we are going to do we are going to see that how uh, you know irregular verbs functions a lot of examples right so when we do a lot of examples we really become familiar with the concept our fear of grammar goes away so if you really want to ace grammar i would always recommend do a lot of examples right practice a lot read a lot of examples that's going to bring such fundamental clarity that you will feel very comfortable with the concept right so let's see so i say i take my time when i go to the shop so i take my time right this is a, this is a habit so we are using present tense so how would i make it uh, make a sentence in past tense uh, when i'll use past tense of take which is took so this is an irregular verb right when i went so go if you are using if you are seeing go then what are we using as the past tense went right so even that's one case where we are using irregular verbs so i hope you are clear with the first set right everybody quickly quickly give me a thumbs up and do let me know are you confident enough i hope you are feeling you know uh, a little uh, you know familiar with the concept right so let's take a look at the second set julie makes a cake for the classroom wow such a nice girl julie is right so that's the reason this cake is there in front of us julie made a cake for the classroom so are you seeing that make becomes made right so that would be what that would be an irregular verb so make is an irregular verb you're going to place it in the category of irregular verbs right come to the third one 
she sees a silhouette shape like man in the window so if you have to make a past sentence i mean the sentence we are using a past tense she saw a silhouette shaped like a man in the window so for sees uh, saw is the irregular verb when we talk about simple past or second form of the verb right take a look at the last set we came to aunt jane's for uh, we come to aunt jane's so that's a trend that's a habit that's a tradition that's a pattern so whenever we talk about a trend a habit a tradition or a pattern we talk about uh, you know simple present right so we are soon after verbs we are soon going to switch to tenses so there you would be able to understand it more though i'm just you know uh, slightly sowing the seeds so that you become familiar you start getting you know a little interested in uh, you know tenses and in detail we are going to explore the concept of tenses is very soon so let's take a look at the past of the sentence if we make we came to aunt jane's for thanksgiving each year right so uh, in this case instead of come we are using came which is the second form of the verb and you can see that come is an irregular verb right so i hope my dear students you are clear here let's further proceed uh so please do remember do and have are also irregular verbs right so uh, do uh, does right so these are irregular verbs because the second would be did right so it's not following a spelling pattern so again we put uh, you know uh, do also and have also in irregular verbs like you can already see the uh, sentences on the screen to help you understand the concept better i do agree so when we talk about so where do we use do and where do we use does uh, let just to help you understand so when we talk about i'll just simply do one thing i'll uh, put my pointer on so when i say uh, do and then there is does right so do is actually singular right and sorry does is actually singular and do is plural so does is singular and do is plural right so when we talk about uh, i we'll say i do we'll say we do i'll say you do and we'll say they do right so i hope it is clear but if you have to use does so we'll say she does or i'll say he does right or maybe if you can use a proper noun ram does teacher does so that's how we use it right so do do is plural and does is singular right so let's uh, take a look at these sentences i do agree right he does it often so i and you they usually uh, take the verb which is uh, in sync with the plural part right so i do agree we do agree they do agree you do agree so in this case um, you will understand that do is usually considered plural he does it often so she does it often uh, you know uh, ram does it often right so this is how we are using does with singular nouns right so if you come to the third example we have done so then there is this uh, another set has and have that you can see so have is for plural and has is for singular again uh, you are going to see that i have pencils right if i am going to make a sentence or i'll say they have pencils or i can say we have pencils or i can say you have pencils so again with uh, you know have will go with you i and with plural uh, you know uh, subject and when we talk about has has will go for singular like if i say uh, where do i write okay i'll write it here she has a pencil right so instead of she you can also say he has a pencil or you can say ram has a pencil right so we are using has in a singular form right so um the past uh, of has would be or have would be had so this is a very interesting part so in the second form of the verb had would remain to be uh, you know same for singular and plural so that's something that we need to keep in mind right uh, i had a uh, fever they had fever we had fever you had fever so this is how we are going to use it right so let's uh, quickly take a look at the sentences everybody please do so uh, assimilate and gather the information so that you are acquainted and then we are going to move forward right
so i hope you are clear with irregular verbs so all these are examples of irregular verbs simply means where there is not a set spelling pattern as it is seen in regular form of the verbs Great, great. So let's further proceed. Now we are going to talk about phrasal verbs, a very interesting concept, students, and you get a lot of questions based on phrasal verbs. So I would definitely recommend that you know first let me explain you what phrasal verbs are. Then there are going to be a lot of recommendations for you. So let's get started. So phrasal verbs are not single words, right? So what do we mean? They are in the combination of verbs. with a preposition right so let me just give you an example so there is a verb then there is a preposition and this combination conveys a fixed or a certain meaning right so it conveys a fixed or a certain meaning and you call it what a phrasal verb so it is also like an idiomatic expression idiomatic expression means something which is fixed right so like if i'll say uh, i'll give you this example i'll say make and then i'll add this uh, preposition up so if i'll go to the uh, you know salon i'll say get my makeup done if your mother would go she will also say you know get my makeup done right or uh, maybe your teacher some other teacher goes she will also say get my makeup done right so everybody would go and say get my makeup done anybody would go and say do my make down right nobody would say that why because makeup has got a certain fixed meaning which you cannot tamper and people do understand as it is right so that's what we mean by phrasal verbs right so like if i'll say uh, you should point out the errors right so nobody will say point in the errors right nobody will say point between the errors or uh, nobody would say point upon the errors everybody will say point out right so this is fixed you can't tamper it and this is how people absorb it point out is identify the errors right or if i'll say you meet somebody and i'll say, you say i look forward to your contribution right nobody is saying i look forward in your contribution right so this has got a certain meaning which cannot be tampered which cannot be altered and it is accepted and absorbed by the people in our day to day discussions um, and that's how these are conventions that people need to agree now what happens is that you know there are so many uh, you know with with few additions here and there there are certain alterations also possible and i will tell you how but now it is very important that this if you are going to search you are going to see there is a, a detailed list of phrasal verbs right so students do ask us that ma'am what should be done how do we retain so many phrasal verbs and these are tested my dear students these are very frequently tested right in competitive exams you can't escape it so my suggestion is that from today please pen it down somewhere from today what are you going to do you are going to start making a list of all the phrasal verbs you encounter while you are reading while you are you know uh, attending a class or while you are discussing with somebody or you are watching a series and somehow a phrasal verb comes in front of you and you are able to identify do this conscious effort and say i am sure you will be able to identify at least five phrasal verbs every day in case you are not able to then find a list right where there are certain phrasal verbs and keep on learning at least five phrasal verbs every day right because like i said the list is endless so if you'll see that you know uh, i'll start learning at some point of time you know later in my life uh, or you know in my higher class then it's not going to achieve our purpose we would definitely want that you know our our you know um, present information base keeps on you know getting better it should be upgraded every single day it should improve every single day so learning so many phrasal verbs together would be that you will be you know in a chaos you will be mixing the phrasal verbs and you would not be able to retain even right so it cannot happen you will have your one day meal in a single day you cannot have your 10 days meal in a single day right so similarly if you are learning phrasal verbs it cannot happen that you know you start learning one fine 
one day you realize okay so uh, i have to give my sat or i have to appear for clat or i have to appear for ip mat in my 12 standard so what i'll do is that i'll start learning the phrasal verbs in 11th so no this is not going to happen right because at that point of time maybe studies uh, pressure would be huge or you would have so many other you know uh, other things to do you if, if you are going for your sat it might you might be feeling that i need to work on my profile you know i need to you know go to an ngo to get the certificate or i need to participate in extra curricular activities or my boards are coming what do i do or i need to focus more on pcm because that's what i have chosen right so there if you are leaving it for there which you don't know right how it would be and how much time would you get so this is the time where you are having sufficient time in your kitty and learning five uh, phrasal verbs would be an investment of not more than 3 to 5 minutes in a day right very honestly if you just take a glance it would not take even more than a minute right so that much of investment you can do it for yourself right or you know just dedicate that okay in my entire week i am learning 15 phrasal verbs set a figure for yourself set a target for yourself maybe 5 maybe 10 maybe 15 i would suggest 5 every day but if you are finding it too much like 35 phrasal verbs would be difficult for you so then you can decide okay not 35 then maybe you know somewhere around 20 or if you are having more time maybe 25 or if you see your exams coming you can you know reduce it to 10 or if you see the entire week you don't have much to do in your schools or you're relatively you know in a comfortable space then maybe you know more so that number i give you the liberty to you know adjust and decide for your own self right but be uh, you know honest and committed towards it right so if you make small efforts regularly day in and day out you will see that your your improvement happens right but if there is you know one fine day where you want to you know learn phrasal verbs and you dedicate a uh, you know 30 minutes 40 minutes and next week you're not doing anything next 15 days you're not doing anything then you know uh, we are not reaching anywhere and that we wouldn't want we would want consistent efforts on a regular basis right so please do that so like the say make without up uh, expresses that something is being created so i i like the previous sentence we made sharon made the cake for everybody in the party and make up is um, we know that uh, the story was made up or make up like i told you we did so many examples right so i hope you are clear with this particular part of the discussion everybody so let's see what lies ahead let's take a look at these uh, sentences and try and understand that uh, what the phrasal verbs are trying to convey so i'll take uh, you know i'll ask you to quickly uh, take a minute and read all the sentences try and understand though by just observing and reading it you will be able to get along with the meaning but still we would discuss take a minute's time and explore the sentences and then we are going to start with the discussion so let's start take a look at the first sentence mary looked forward to her high school reunion so what does this phrase look forward are you able to see look and forward right so she is very excited about it she she is eager to you know be a part of the uh, high school reunion so if i ask you make a statement everybody make a statement on this phrase look forward everybody please start doing it what are we waiting for what are you looking forward to so i'm looking forward to have a prosperous and happy new year uh, you know 2022 having a prosperous new year that's what i'm looking forward what are you looking forward quickly frame a sentence this way you'll be able to remember it right great so let's move to the second one 
he brought up some points again and again so brought up means he raised the same points right so are you able to see brought or bring bring up can also be used uh, depending on the tense of the sentence so brought plus up so this means he is raising the same points again and again he's bringing those points for the discussion right uh, leroy handed in the wallet to the police handed in means gave right i make up stories all the time so make up means create she pointed out donald's mistake so pointed out means identified right so i hope you are clear with the phrasal verbs so uh, ahead lies a very interesting exercise but before that it's time to take a quick break quickly go back uh, grab something uh, to eat or have a glass of uh, water and quickly join me back so that we are able to you know uh, discuss few questions with you please do so if you are not going you can do some jumping jacks or you can revise the concept or you can make sentences on the phrasal verbs that we have recently learned right so you can utilize the time the way you would want so it's great that uh, many of the students have come back welcome again let's wait for few more seconds for everybody to join in back so that we can identify the meaning of the phrasal verbs that are there and do this exciting drill everybody uh, let's wait for few more seconds uh, so that the friends who have not joined us yet can also come back great so let's see uh, these five uh, phrases so what are you going to do you are going to uh, i'm sure these are very familiar ones the exercise is very easy so i'll just uh, give you uh, a minute and just think of uh, these phrasal verbs or maybe try to create some sentences and you will be able to identify that what does these uh, phrasal verb means and then we are going to get into the discussion so please do that take a minute and either make sentences or relate or think about when was the last time you encountered any of such phrasal verbs and in case you're not finding uh, the meaning of uh, either of the phrasal verbs in the list then we are soon going to discuss don't worry but just give it a try So we have some answers coming and uh, I'm very glad to tell you that many of the answers are right. So let's uh, uh, wait for everybody to answer and quickly finish with the exercise so that we can begin with the discussion. great so let's start with the discussion so check out uh, i'm sure you have been to airports and been to hotels so uh, whenever you uh, 
are done with your holiday i know that's the saddest part your father would say that i'll just go out and complete the checkout formalities right so checkout means if you're up if you're in a hotel or a, a, at the airport you're leaving that so that's what the phrase checkout means right come to the next one which is check-in so that's an interesting part right so whenever you go to the airport you're going for the holidays and you will you know enter the airport then you'll say let's uh, do the check-in formalities right or you'll check in in the hotel so that's where we will fit in the phrasal verb check-in see it's so easy so it's not that all the phrasal verbs that exist in the planet you need to learn there would be many that you would already be aware or that you would be using in your day-to-day -day discussions and that's great right but the verbs uh, the combination phrasal verb combinations that you do not know you need to know right for that you need to make an effort right breakup i am sure everybody knows that i don't even need to discuss this breakup is uh usually uh, when there is uh, no cohesion or friendship that remains between two people right uh, let's come to the fourth one break into so enter forcibly the thieves uh broken into the room so that means they entered forcibly so you can write it or i'll just write this for you enter forcefully right so you can write it down in case it is uh you know new to you break into i feel might be new for many of us so you can write the meaning of this phrase enter forcefully that's what we would mean right so carry on what does it means uh, carry on with your work right or there are so many punjabi movie titles with this carry on jatta carry on is to continue okay so uh, suppose you are uh, you know done with the party and you would want to leave so you'll say carry on my dear friends okay so i hope you really enjoyed this session so this is your homework and you need to identify the meaning of the phrasal verbs answers will be shared with you and uh, do create a list of more such phrasal verbs and share on our fundu class mobile app on our facebook group and on our instagram page and do use the tag hashtag fundu class life and uh, if you have really liked the session please uh, do follow me on our fundu class mobile app you can easily get the app on the uh, you know google play store or if you are using iphones you can get it on the app store do leave some encouraging comments let me know that what would you be wanting in the upcoming sessions so that we can curate the content in order to meet your requirements and our entire team eagerly waits for your input so please do post uh, some uh, you know interesting videos and we would love watching them and uh, please don't forget to use the right hashtag and what i always say is very important that you should keep close to your heart that whenever we learn we should always you know try that uh, it's just not to pass the exam but to you know become better right with a skill set so if your if your aim will be you know passing the exam then your effort would not be that great but when your aim will be to improve your own self to you know be more polished to be a smarter person then you will see such a drastic improvement in your personality you know you'll be you'll start enjoying the process of learning so it should never be a burden that oh i have to do it you should be always up for it wow i have to do it right so right spirit is very very important keep learning keep revising don't forget get consistency is the key and work very very hard may god be the kindest to you thank you so much for joining please help spread the word tell your friends about our uh, amazing fundo classes take care bye bye